Every Idaho adult has been eligible to get a COVID vaccine for about a month now, but recent numbers are showing that not everyone is jumping at the chance to get one. In fact, reports have vaccine supply now in greater amounts than the demand for the shots. Although kids under 16 aren't eligible for the vaccine yet, data from the Department of Health and Welfare shows about a fourth of our population is fully vaccinated. The state has administered over a million doses, and that may sound like a lot, but keep in mind there are nearly two million of us in this state, and two of the vaccines are required uh, in those two doses, Pfizer and Moderna. 465,000 are fully vaccinated, again about a quarter of our total population, but another 129,000 are on their way. They've gotten one shot of the two-dose vaccine, so if you combine those numbers, and in a few weeks, 594,000 will be fully vaccinated. But again, it's still only about a third of our total population and that leaves us well short of herd immunity. So joining us now uh, to talk about these numbers is Dr. Carolyn Bridges. She has quite the resume. Uh, right now she's working as an internal medicine physician, but she worked for the CDC for years. She knows her stuff when it comes to the vaccine. Thanks for joining us today on the news at four, Dr. Bridges. And the first thing I have to ask you, we've been, been reporting on the lack of interest, it seems like right now, by the masses to get vaccinated. Does that surprise you? And when you talk to folks who have yet to get it, what's the basis for their hesitancy and how do you address that? Well, well, first, I'd just like to point out that a lot of older adults, those people who are at highest risk of severe COVID disease have gotten vaccinated. So. Um, over 70% of people 65 and older have gotten the COVID vaccine. Um, for people who are younger than 65, you know, they've had a little bit less time, I think, to think about it and um, get access. So I certainly hope that we'll continue to see improvements in those numbers. Um, and some people, I think, just are a little bit hesitant and they, uh, you know, want to have more questions answered and maybe sit and wait a little bit longer um, to feel more comfortable. Got to ask you about this, Dr. Bridges, and this is something that we continue to see. We've seen this since December. Uh, it's a big question about folks thinking that the formation of the vaccines happened too quickly. And then, of course, there was the pause on the Johnson & Johnson following the reports of, of people getting blood clots. Uh, two people died. That pause, as you know, has been lifted, but the hesitancy for it hasn't. What's your response when people say, we're not sure that these are ready to be rolled out? Well, really for any medical product, there are going to be rare um, adverse events that occur. And uh, the U.S. has set up the most robust, the most complete, uh, system for monitoring safety that we've ever had. And so I think it really was um, a demonstration of how, of how well our safety system works, that they identified these very uh, rare, although, you know, serious uh, blood clots that can occur with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And once they found those, then they obviously um, put a pause on use of that vaccine. Uh, you know, think about the Moderna, though, and the Pfizer vaccines. These are two mRNA vaccines. They're very different from Johnson & Johnson. There have been over 200 million doses administered, and we're not seeing uh, the side effect at all with that vaccine. So I would say that people who are concerned about that um, rare potential side effect with Johnson & Johnson, that you have two other vaccines that now have been administered to millions of people, uh, and they've been found to be safe. We're talking to Dr. Carolyn Bridges, who is an expert in this field. Uh, here's another question. If you are fully vaccinated and two weeks out from your second shot, is the main risk with exposure, not for you at that point, but for those that refuse to get the vaccine? Well, um, certainly um, all vaccines, uh, have a, a small percentage that are still going to potentially uh, get infected even after vaccination. These vaccines for COVID are great. 
vaccines. There's no doubt about that. And the risk of you getting sick after being vaccinated, um, of you getting COVID, are quite, quite small. So um, the one concern would be with people who are at very high risk of severe COVID disease, so the very elderly or people who have very weakened immune systems who might be uh, exposed uh, to COVID and get severe disease. So really, uh, once you're vaccinated, um, you just want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're still careful around those very um, immune compromised people. This next question comes from Lori in Boise, and she says, if one has had COVID and recovered, do they need to be vaccinated as well? I've heard yes and no. Which one is it? Yeah, that's a great question, and a lot of people have that question. Uh, and the answer is yes, you should still get vaccinated. Um, there is some protection uh, after being infected, but that doesn't last that long, it appears. And uh, additionally, we are seeing these new virus variants from the coronavirus that are uh, emerging. And these vaccines, again, produce a very um, a robust immune response uh, that has been shown to provide uh, substantial protection even against these variants. And what it shows really is that um, substantial protection, especially against uh, severe disease that could result in hospitalization. Next one is, I've heard that if you have COVID-19, if you have had it before, there is a greater chance that the vaccine will make you sick again. Is that true? Yeah, there's no evidence to support um, that at all. Um, the vaccines all have been, uh, the, the vaccine studies all included some people in them that had, had a COVID-19 infection. And the vaccine was equally uh, safe and effective in uh, those groups. This one comes from Janine, who writes, stay with me here. I've received both of my COVID vaccines. However, some friends and family are claiming they won't get the vaccines because they contain aluminum and or petroleum byproducts. In looking at the ingredients on the CDC site, it doesn't appear, appear that they contain aluminum. They do, however, include polyethylene glycol. Is this ingredient dangerous for some individuals who are allergic to petroleum products? What are the facts on these ingredients? Yeah, that's a great question. And, um one thing to point out, which, which she does, is that you can find exactly the ingredients in all these vaccines it's publicly available on the CDC website. In terms of polyethylene glycol, um, this is uh, something that can be used in other, particularly injectable um, medications or potentially other vaccines. So if the person has had a severe allergic reaction to an injectable medication or vaccine before, uh, then they may uh, not uh, want to use one of the mRNA vaccines or um, have that vaccine administered, you know, in a location where they potentially could, uh, if needed, um, get medical care for severe allergic reaction. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine does not contain polyethylene glycol. Mm -hmm. But those severe allergic reactions uh, from the mRNA vaccines are also quite rare, about five per million doses administered. Dr. Bridges, we have time for one more question. We have about a minute, and this comes from someone who just goes by the name of Mark Johnson. There's the question for those of us who are three and four weeks out from our second dose, considered to be fully vaccinated. How safe, Dr. Bridges, should we feel about going out in public, shaking hands, maybe giving an occasional hug, being in a group? How safe should those of us who have been vaccinated with both doses feel? Well, CDC just released new guidance yesterday expanding uh, what you can do if you're fully vaccinated. So a week or so ago, they um, recommended domestic travel without doing a, a pre-travel testing or um, quarantine. Again, that's domestically, you wanna make sure you check before you go someplace internationally and you need to follow the, the local um, health department rules. But you can also be outside without a mask. Um, you can go uh, visit 
uh, indoors. Uh, another family um, that is unvaccinated, again, as long as that person is not at high risk for COVID. And also, if you've been vaccinated and you've been exposed to someone with COVID, uh, then you don't need to be tested or quarantined, again, as long as you don't have any symptoms of illness. So um, being vaccinated is uh, very helpful, and it's going to um, help us all get back uh, to more normalcy. If you needed another reason to get vaccinated, you just heard it right there. Dr. Carolyn Bridges, thank you for spending some time with us today in the News at 4 and answering some of our questions. We appreciate you. And we're back after this. Thank you.